things <coughs> with the Father is communication. That's the major thing with the Father. Without communication, put it this way, he got no one to talk to in that sense, but he wants someone to talk to and to talk through, you know? So it's, it's, it's a key thing in our, in, our, in our move of our spirit to connect with the Father. There's a connection there. And uh, he wants that very, very much so because this is why he wants sons. To release his seed into and to pass through. That's why Jesus was the word. He was the seed that walked and he was impregnated. Amen. But before I go any further, let's just pray, eh? Father, we thank you. Lord, I, I say it over and over, Father. How can we say thank you to you for what you've done, what you're about to do, and what you continue to do through your church of people? Father, we thank you. Lord, once again, we thank you. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit, because you said you'll send the comforter. The comforter comes to the church. The comforter is the teacher. And he will not leave us fatherless, orphans. He will not leave his church orphans. So, Father God, you are here for a reason. And you'll continually to be here as a father, teaching us and talking to us, disciplining us, getting us back onto our feet, taking us through the trials, taking us through the test, yes. taking us through the fire, Lord, taking us through this baptism, leading us back into the presence of the true Father, Lord, in the, back into the holies of holies coming from our spirit back into. Lord, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're touching everything in the church that's not of you. Everything that bounds up the flesh, Lord, that you're going to deal with. Anything in that realm of darkness that's touching our flesh, Lord, Holy Spirit, you're going to deal with that area. Deal with that area, Holy Spirit, because that's where you are moving, in that area of darkness to deal with those things, those chains that bind us, that connection that was made in there, those covenants that are in darkness that bind us, Lord. We thank you for breaking every covenant of darkness. We pray this very day in the name of the Son of the Most High God, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Pool. One, one of the key things darkness is afraid of is the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus also represents and is the blood of the Father. When he speaks, the blood speaks. You know, in, in, in darkness, in the chains of darkness, cannot <laughs> be linked together, if I can say it like that, when the word of God is spoken to come apart. It can't stay together. The strength of the power of darkness has to be released has to be broken because there's a higher power moving in that dimension. Amen? Amen. Can you see that? Do you understand there's a power coming into the church of another level that we have not tapped into yet before? A higher power, a higher word. This word is, is an oracle walking in, in and through a character. It's a word that's going to dispose of all these things, these principalities and powers that torment us and that wrestle against us and they fight against us. These torments are gotta go because they only they're only there in darkness for a season, according to the to the word of God. They're only there for a season. But in that season, learn to be a warrior in God as well. Don't don't be get trampled on. For me, I'm still learning too. No one knows everything. Nobody knows everything, only the Father. He knows everything. But I'm here to tell you, no man knows the hour of the day. But there are messengers that have gone up in the Spirit and have heard and seen some things. So their testimony, it's in their testimony that's telling us how close the hour and the coming of the Lord is. They have a testimony. Of course, they heard and they saw something. That's their testimony that they're speaking to the churches. And we've got to be careful. There are false testimonies going around in the earth today. False testimonies. People saying that Jesus Christ has come to them and he said this and he said that. Well, the angel of light, darkness himself, 
can manifest as Jesus Christ. It's very, very real, folks. It's very, very real. The manifestation of a false light in the church and people, these things are coming to a people and people are thinking, this is Jesus Christ. There's a warning in the message today. We must be tapped in to the Holy Ghost with our spirit. Because we must discern them. It says in scripture, you'll, you'll know them by their fruits, their language. If their language is not of yours, don't partake of their language. Get away from them. It says there, don't follow them. Don't go where they are. Stay away from their teachings because it's a bad table that fruit is on. We can't, we can't eat from the table of the Lord and the table of devils. That's what he's saying here. There's no fence in between. You cannot eat, 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 eat of the both words. You've got to get away and make a decision in our lives. I've seen that table. I've seen that fruit. And I know where that fruit comes from. I was shown in the spirit where this fruit comes from. And in this day of atonement, this is what God is dealing with this fruit that's been spread amongst the church. Because he's producing his own sons. This tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When, when Eve partook and released it, it's still being released in the church today. This bad, evil fruit. It's been released in the church. That's why the, the word says, you will know them by their fruit. Understand their language, where their teaching is coming from. When it's coming out of the soul, it's coming out from under the veil of darkness. Our soul is under the cover and under the shadow of death, under the veil. And there's things in there that God wants to deal with and expose. Amen. And I want to, I want to go on a little bit more this morning. Uh, I spoke a little bit on the, the false prophets and the false Christ in the earth. And I asked a question to the Father, Lord, when, when will you move and deal with all this stuff in the church. Because I, for one, I've seen a lot of stuff and said a lot of stuff what I heard and saw. But there's a, there's, there's a time and season where God will move according to what he's shown and said to me in the church. But at this point of time and season, I'm only speaking what is about to come. But it's up to you to tap into God's word as well and to see, is this fruit real? Is this is there life in this fruit what's been spoken now or death in this fruit? Is this is this word true or is this word false? You've got to go and dig it out. So today, my message, just following on the false Christ and the false prophets and what they're actually saying in the earth. And, and believe me, at the end of the day, believe me, the only a remnant is going to go into the holies of holies. Only a remnant. If you take from the time from the Garden of Eden, we put the Garden of Eden over there, Adam and Eve there, all right, Adam and Eve there, and we look right back to the cross, here. From there to there, have a think about it. How many people do you think really are going to go into the Holies of Holies? How, how many? There's not going to be very many people, really. Because he wiped a lot of people out according to the flood. And only eight went into the ark. That's, that's, a, that's a remnant. How many out of Abraham's day really are going to go in to the holies of holies? How many that followed Moses back then? Those people way back then. How many of them are going to go in to the holies of holies? Only a remnant. Only a remnant will go in. And from this time of the cross, the, he fulfilled everything. We know this, but from this time of the cross, and can I say it this way, to the coming of the Lord, can I say it like that? From the cross until this time period, at the last trump and all that there, when we, when we go in, how many between there now and here are going to go into the holies of holies? We know there's a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. Are we a part of the remnant of the hundredfold? You can be 30 in the church, you can be 60 in the church, or you can be one a, a hundredfold in the church. Full on for God. That's, that's a remnant. And why I say that is because of these false prophets and these false Christs. 
Their language comes from under the veil of darkness. And they're speaking to the church today. So they're, and, and their, 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 their signs and wonders, and the power of their signs and wonders are going to come from darkness to manifest against the power and the move of the Holy Spirit in this Day of Atonement. I'll get to the book in a minute. You see what I'm saying? We're, we're in a season where we're going to see signs and wonders manifest in the church. Don't worry about the world, what they're doing out there. It's the battle of Armageddon is over the church. And these false prophets and these false Christs today will tell you you can get on there and have a look. They, they'll tell you that the battle is over in Megiddo, in Israel. I've said this before. And the whole entire church and their thinking now is turned them towards that nation where the battle will happen. Is that right? Are we hearing that? Russia's going to come down. America's involved. Is America in the Bible? They prophesy. And then they'll show you in the Bible where America has been prophesied about. And where the Battle of Armageddon and all those countries will come together over there in that nation. You see, what they missed, the main thing I always come back to, what they missed is that connection with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of this Word. That's who they missed. They missed him back then. The scribes and the Sadducees and the Pharisees missed him back then. Because they were not connected to the Holy Spirit of the times. Can I say it this way? I have no doubt the false prophets and the false priests back then were connected to another spirit talking through them. Same too and with the days that we live in right now in the church. These false prophets and these false Christs will prophesy external things that will happen in the earth. Earthquakes, lightning and thunders and fires, tsunamis, ice that will fall out of the sky, big as cars and hit people. And we'll all be annihilated by these bombs and wars. It's all false. That's not the way that Jesus Christ is coming back to his bride. His battle is in the spirit realm. It's not an external battle. We said it before. Jesus Christ is not coming on a cloud over, over in Israel somewhere. No, it's in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is right here. We're all in the spiritual realm. But God is going to open our eyes of our spirit to see it. And I don't like to talk about myself a lot, but there's some experiences I've had, Pastor, yes. even sitting in the church and seeing people in the natural like this and seeing what's in their life in the spiritual realm at the same given time. This is how Jesus walked in the earth. He can see in the natural, and this is why he's calling foxes and everything else. Why? Why is he calling that? Why is that, why is that scribe a fox? Because he was seeing him the way his character was in the spirit at the same time. He, was, he wasn't being cheeky, but he was speaking what he was seeing in the spiritual realm. This is why the spirit word has to deal with the spiritual realm first before the natural is touched. You can't touch the natural, then go back up. You've got to touch the spiritual realm where the battle is happening. So what I'm saying is not going to come a natural battle in the Middle East first. And Jesus is not going to come down there and save all the Jews and do all that. Praise God for the Jews. Some of them will be touched in this move of God too. Amen. But what I'm saying is, it's not an external experience that we're going to have. These false prophets and false Christ are very, very dangerous in the church today around the world. They prophesy and they talk about, yeah, Donald Trump. As he, as he was going to win the, the, the elections. I need to say this. As he was going to win the elections. But where, where are they now? Where are they now? The people are still in their churches. The people are still listening to them. You know why? Because they're deaf, blind, and they're naked. 
This word is going to go to the nations, but only a remnant will hear this word. Only a remnant will walk in the understanding of what's the spirit of this word. That's what's going to happen. Amen? Amen. Can I get a pen there, please? Sir? Oh, one here. Thank you. It's very, very strong, strong in my spirit that they, they have the cheek and the gall, Pastor Manny, to speak in the churches and tell people and prophesy, this is what, this, thus says the Lord. They prophesy and say these things in the churches. And, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not blaming the congregation to, to believing them. Because the point of God, he's going to deal with ministry in the churches. These false prophets and these kings of the earth, we may not get into that today, but these kings of the earth, they have the highest seat in the churches. And they're the ones there that God's going to deal with in this move. He's going to remove these false ministries in the earth that have been prophesying false lies and, and deceiving the people and causing the people to fall away from the faith. I cannot help but preach or talk about a strong message in the church because it's needed. We all need to hear this. I need to hear this. And I need to see this. Because I, I said it back home on Wednesday night when the Lord began to speak to me that the, there's, a, there's an awakening coming into the church that's going to awaken us out of our sleepiness. Our, our, our worship, Pastor Manny, is going to come up in one accord here, in the spirit. There's a shift coming in our worship, and it's going to be just spirit worship through the church. A worship we never heard before. There's a language that's going to be released through our spirit. It's an incense that's already in there, but it's just to come out of. Another level in worship. Going straight to the Father. There's too much soul worship into another father in the church. This is what God wants to deal about. This, this contaminated incense that goes back to Satan himself. Too many churches with the bright lights and all the colors and all the dancing and all the hype. There's witchcraft in the dance in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Want to do a crobbery in the church? Be careful. You want to shake a leg in the church? Be careful. The Holy Ghost is dealing with our dance in the church. He's dealing with our worship in the church. The way the word is spoken in the church, he's going to deal with it. Church is about to change. That's us, our character. We're shifting more in the spirit now. Rather than spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, body. Spirit. We have got to be a church of the spirit in this move. Hear what I'm saying? A church of the spirit have a different language. They walk in a different garment. They talk differently. They worship differently. All the instruments, like I said it before, in the natural is in our spirit. That's where the music comes from. That's where the incense comes from, within our spirit. Everything is in our spirit. That's why the church is changing. The sound of the soul will be heard no more. It will just be church. And these false prophets and these false Christs, and can I add into that Jeremiah 23 talks about these false priests. Not just back then, but of the now that are in the churches. False priests. The enemy is sending his messengers into the churches because Satan comes as an angel of light and he's ministers. Very, very dangerous, Pastor Lena. Satan's ministers are in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you believe that? Yes, I do. They're the ones that we need to know that are speaking false words, that are speaking from under the veil of darkness. You see, this message on these false prophets and false Christ has just started. This is going to intensify. 
faster. It's going to intensify. Why? Because God, the Holy Spirit, is now in the earth, is going to start to expose these people in a big way. You watch right around the world, they're going to get exposed. It's not about numbers in the church. Thousands and thousands and thousands. Big churches in the world today, we see that. But they're being misled. How many in those thousands of people really know the spirit of this word? You know why? They, don't, they miss him? Because they, they've been shifted in their thinking and their understanding and they're looking to another nation where Jesus Christ and everything's going to happen overseas somewhere. Instead of looking back internal inside us. Everything Jesus Christ wants to do in the Holy Spirit is internal inside us. Amen? That's where the battle is. That's where the war is. That's where Satan's seed is in the core of our soul. You heard some of the teaching. Satan, uh, he sits in the temple. The, uh, the man of sin sits in the temple. What temple? Well, they, 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 they say this too, that the man of sin is a man that'll sit in the temple in Jerusalem. I'm stir stirring up the bees here today. Whether they hear this all around the world, you know, at the end of the day, you need to hear it too. He does not sit in the temple. He's not a man that's going to sit in the temple in Israel somewhere and dictate to the world from there. No, this is the temple that he sits in, in the core of our soul. That's where the man of sin sits there. That's where he speaks from. And he moves and, and speaks through this character, this flesh, this beastly nature that's in here. That's where God wants to deal with. The Antichrist is in here. He's not over there. He's in here. Anti means against, Christ means the anointed. Is that right? Yes. Oh, he takes the place of the true Christ. Is that right? Well, he's not taking the place of the true Christ external. Is that right? So he's internal. So where's his position internal then? He's taking the place of the true Christ in the core of our soul. That's where the Antichrist is. The spirit of Antichrist. Antichrist, the character, the spirit, the word of the character. It's been spoken in the church and impregnating people. It's not a man sitting over there somewhere, coming out of Arabia somewhere, whatever, and it'll sit in the church and dictate and rule the world. That's not going to be. We've got to look back into the church, in this church. We've got to look back inside us because the spirit of the word says that. Everything is internal, amen? Oh, I don't mean to come fired up, but it just, it, it just happens. It just happens. You know, at the end of the day, this is all about love. It's all about love. Yeah. No, nobody growl on here. We just, we just fired up about this word. That's all it is, you know. I'm always excited to come here. I'm always excited. I'm trying to fight my wife this morning to get here early. You, you know what the women like, eh? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. You, you fellas can agree with me or he's going to go yeah. quiet on me? Yeah. Hey? Who's with me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to get a black eye, you're going to get a black eye too later. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good go. So Matthew 3.11 says this. I want to lead into this Feast of Tabernacles. Feast of Tabernacles. Sorry for us being a little bit late. We got caught up at trucks and everything. And uh, or else I would have read it up earlier. And I've done this before, Passover, Pentecost. Is that right? Yeah. Trumpets. Day of Atonement. The finished work, and they do say tabernacles proper as well. And this is the kingdom. The Lord has been talking to me very strongly about the move of the kingdom of God in the hour that we live in. Pastor Manny, the move of the kingdom of God.
we, we don't realize what is about to happen really in this move of the kingdom. But we can have a peek there. We're allowed to have a look there. But the manifestation that's of the, the power of the kingdom, who is a character called Jesus Christ. We know now that Jesus is all feast. Is that right? Yeah. He's the feast of Passover, Pentecost, trumpets. He's the feast of tabernacles and all that. So that's, that's Jesus. And why I say that, even those that, that are first time, they're hearing it out there. Jesus, when you, when you accept Jesus, I'll just go through it for those out there. When you accept Jesus into your life, is that right? Yeah. He, it's not an external coming. It's an internal happening in us. So we accept Jesus in our life. So now Jesus is active in our life. All right? Pentecost, the gift of tongues and all that, that's, that's an external, internal experience. Amen? Now, the Feast of Tabernacles, Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and all the finished work, and all this here is internal. There is nothing of this is external. It's all inside of us. The working of the Holy Spirit is coming through us. Amen? So we don't have to look for earthquakes and these type of signs in the earth to think that's the coming of the Lord because they prophesy about these earthquakes here and that there, that there. Satan can get behind the natural elements and do things in the earth to deceive people and make that prophesy look like it came from God when it never. There's a big battle going on, folks. So here, Matthew 3.11 says this. There's some things that need to, to happen <coughs> Uh, uh, can I say it the way, to the church to really shake us up. Because yeah. that, that word that came to me the other night, that there's an awakening coming into the church, is, was very, very strong. We get too lackadaisy and we don't see uh, the power of the Spirit really moving in the church and we get too lackadaisy and some of us leave and go to other churches because they, oh, there's nothing happening over there. Well, what's happening over in this church? Oh, it's a bit more lively there and worship and that there. And they get around, they flash in the bubbles and jump around there and, and a bit of a shake on the floor and stuff there. But they're missing the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. They're too, too, too much running about and going places. Stay still. Stay still. I indeed baptize you with what? Water unto repentance. But he who comes after me, whoo, he who comes after me is internal. He's, he's not coming outside of John the Baptist. When John the Baptist seen Jesus who takes away the sin of the world, he wasn't talking about Golgotha, the place of the skull outside the city. He was pointing that, what he was saying, given the revelation and the move of the Holy Spirit in his life, he was talking about the spiritual realm. He was talking about the sacrifice that was coming to him that was going to happen, not just in the natural showing, but in a spiritual movement going on. He that comes after me, who is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. So he's saying here there's a process. Water, Holy Ghost, fire. Is that right? Yes. That's a process that needs to happen internal inside us. It's not an external thing that we need to go somewhere and, and someone's going to build a big fire and if we, we, we've got the courage to jump in the fire and go through it, we, will go, we can go into the holies of holies. See, to go in there, we've got to pass through the fire that's inside us that's going to be released. But we'll see the manifestations in the people in the church. When this fire hits, church, that's what I'm saying, church is going to change. We be a church on fire, a character that's on fire. Then, then your language changes because your character now has changed. Milk, bread, meat. But this language of fire that's coming into the church, because it says about the two witnesses, out of their mouth comes fire. Well, that's a word. They've been through a process. Their word, their fire is anointed. 
these two anointed ones, their word is anointed. Their fire, when it comes out of their mouth, is anointed. We're coming into the season, brother, of the anointed word coming through a people. An anointed word is about to be released through a people. And everything that that word says, this is the anointed holy oracle coming into the church. The anointing will touch you. There's sickness in your life. When the word is spoken, I don't have to touch you. The anointing will touch you. There's healing in anointing. It'll touch you. Sickness cannot stay in the anointed church. It'll be removed. This fire is anointed coming from God in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So under this... <coughs> I, I will not get through it. But I'll do my best. Am I coming back down some other time, Pastor? Yeah, and, and finish this off? Yeah. Uh, I just put it out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prophets... Who else we got? Evangelists and teachers. The fivefold ministry. The fivefold ministry are operating, in, operating now, right now. Is that right? Yeah. They're in the church. Praise God for the fivefold ministry that are of God. Amen. All right? So, why I say that. The enemy will always have a opposite. He'll always have a false apostles, false prophets, false evangelists, false pastors, and false teachers in the church. He's got his own fivefold ministry in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why these others, they teach from under the veil, under darkness. Their language comes out of the soul, comes out of the mouth of Satan. That's why they prophesy from darkness but if you get under the, the, the message of the fivefold minister here they're speaking from light this is about light and darkness in the church amen, amen. why I say that and I, I, should, I should put up there <coughs> priest as well just add one more because um, Jeremiah talks about these priests very, very dangerous things, but it's time and season for this to really go out there. I, I, I have no, no problem. You, you don't have a problem at all when the Holy Spirit, the anointing comes on you and you begin to speak about the falseness in the church because the arrows that come back at you can't penetrate the Holy Spirit and they can't penetrate the anointing that's on my life. You see? I don't have a worries about that, talking about this. The church might have. Well, they've got to wake up. You see, why I say the anointing coming into the church and going to deal with these things also is that when Jesus was baptized and he came up, the anointing came down. Is that right? He was the anointed one. And he began to walk in his ministry, the anointing ministry, I call it, the anointed ministry. But that's, this is why when Jesus, he healed, everyone that came to Jesus was healed. Everyone. And this is why, we said it before, Pastor, when this anointing touches the church and, 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 the, and the miraculous happens because of this anointing in the church, masses and masses and masses will come because this church has been anointed. You hear what I'm saying? There's an anointing in the house called the Holy Spirit, and he's releasing anointing, not only in the Passover and Pentecost, but in this feast, in this day of atonement, there's, there's a power of this anointing that's coming that you cannot put it out. It's too strong. We can't just sit in our seats anymore when this anointing and this fire comes. You watch. Watch. It's going to happen. 
I want to say this. I want to prophesy into the churches, in the nations, that there's a fire coming because this is what I heard and this is what I saw. I have the rights now under the anointing to prophesy that this fire is coming into the churches. I am not prophesying from under darkness. I'm prophesying from light. Given by the Holy Spirit. And under the direction of the Holy Spirit that was shown to me that this fire that's coming, he's going to burn up the wood, hay and the stubble internal in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The removal of all this stuff has to go because the anointing in there will overlap this, this, this gammon anointing, this false anointing, this false fire, this false uh, milk, this false bread and this false meat. And the false worship in the church. It will deal with it. And there are those out there that they, they know all they're after is money in the church. Instead of getting into the spirit of this word. You see the Sadducees and the Pharisees locked up. They locked it up. They locked up. They locked up. The, they had the keys of the kingdom. They locked it up. Neither did they go in or the rest of the church go in. God is dealing with those, those scribes in the churches today, those Sadducees and the Pharisees in the church today. God, the Holy Spirit, is coming after you. Going to expose you. Because it says here about these, the fivefold ministries in Ephesians. You see, they all have their gifts. All right, that's right. They all have their gifts. But their gifts are only there. It doesn't, doesn't come over to here, in this feast here, in this Day of Atonement. They don't have the rights. don't have the rights to come up to speak from that position in this feast and give you the interpretation of the book of Revelations and the spirit of that word. You've got to come up into this Feast of Tabernacles. It's a different language up here. It's a different fruit up here. This fruit up here will challenge not, a, not, not, not just them, but this stuff in darkness. This word up here. I stand in the spirit. Everything comes from God, comes through your spirit, and he talks back into these two feasts. This feast here, these... All these fivefold ministries, they talk back to that Passover and they talk into this area here by rights, according to the word. They should be pointing at people and telling them there is another feast here. Amen. Instead of locking them up in this area here and not letting them go on. This is why only a remnant is going to hear about this Feast of Tabernacles. Only a remnant will go into the trumpets. Only a remnant will go through the Day of Atonement. And only a remnant will go on then into the Holies of Holies. This is where the danger is, right here. I'm not saying these, these, these ones here that God has appointed for those seasons there, but for the falseness, those that are speaking from under the veil, they're the ones that, that, that are speaking from the broad way. Did you hear that? They're speaking from the broad way. The broad way where they're speaking from and, 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 and pulling a people away from the faith or deceiving people, I say it once again, they're under the veil of darkness. The true people that will go on in through are the, are the remnant that will go on to through the narrow way. They will go in there through the narrow way. Through the gate. That gate means a porthole. You can't go any other way out. Who is the gate? Ooh, that's him. You've got to go in there. You've got to go in there. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says this. And he gave some apostles, prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry and edifying of the body of Christ. That was their limitations right there. Your gifts, when you cross over into here, when you go into this feast here, these gifts still operate, but there are those that will come from here. They'll come up into this feast here, but you can't take your gifts with you. We've heard that before. Is that right? You can't take your gifts with you. You still operate it. People still got to get saved. 
People have still got to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and all that. So we need someone to come through in the church. So that's still operational till such time. Because when the trumpet sounds and the Holy Spirit brings that, that company of people out here that are still in darkness, these last hour people, he'll bring them through the process and that'll be a quick process. That's all our family members that are still out in the outer darkness. Those ones that are lost. Those ones that are demon bound. Those ones that are in a chain of bondage. Those that are in sick in hospital. Those that are just wandering around anywhere in a daze. That don't know Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is moving. Can I say it this way? Outside of the feast. I no doubt, I've seen it, that he's going to give them dreams and visions. They will come in. They will come in. And it'll be a quick process that goes through the feast because the door is about to close. I said over this church and over churches now, in the spiritual realm, the cloud came down and the door was open. That means heaven is speaking. That means things are ascending and descending. Messengers have gone up through the door. Their spirit has gone inside there. And they're speaking back into this feast, these people here, and saying there's another feast we need to come up into here. But these false prophets and false Christ will speak against this word. I can feel the marrow and the DNA of God inside me. It moves. It's alive. But my flesh fights. My soul fights. But it can't beat the anointing in me. It can't put down the anointing inside me. It's, it's too much fire in there, Pastor. There's too much fire in there. You see what I'm saying? You should have the same fire. You should. Let the anointing be awakening in you. Let the Holy Spirit put the anointing on your tongue. And when you speak to something, let the anointing do the work. That's what Jesus done. So it says here, Matthew 13, 23, says this, But he who receives the seed in the good ground, heareth the word, understands the word, and beareth fruit. And bring us forth some hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. So, in the feast, like I said, when Jesus walked, Jesus was the Word. Holy Spirit brought the seed, impregnated Mary. Mary birthed the Word. And I say it like that because the Word became flesh. And, and, and it was talked about that Jesus. Because he's the one that releases everything out of him. Mary, blood was not in Jesus. It wasn't in him. He had the DNA of the Father. The Word became flesh. The I and the Father are one. She birthed something bigger than I think she really realized. I don't know. I don't know, Mary. I'm just seeing what the Word says. Maybe we can ask her one day. She's there in the cloud of witnesses right now. Amen. When the trumpet sounds, we get the opportunity. But what I'm saying is we need to, that seed that touches us and when pregnant with us, don't sit here in 30-fold, don't sit here in 60-fold, because some, some, some in the churches today, even out of this group here, they don't want to go any further. They want to sit in their anointings and, and see people being healed and stuff like that and cast out devils and do things like that. In this feast here, we said it before, that these devils and demons, even Satan himself, is going to be put back down in the pit. We're coming in this season. Three o'clock or midnight last night, I think, the Lord was speaking to me and that's my wife and I have been up since then, since God spoke to me last night, midnight. And he spoke to me this. And I, I even text Pastor Brian. I see that phone, he ring me up then midnight. Big yarn then about this word here. And uh, this is what the Lord said to me last night. I pondered on this, who this was. Uh, chapter 20, I just want to throw this in there. See, this is, this is the power of God's word that's coming in the spiritual realm. His power 
all his power is not going over there. All his power is going to come through. It's internal. But here in chapter 20 he says this, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon and of the serpent, which is the devil, Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should not deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years were fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed or released a little season. Why is God talking to me specifically about that area there? Why is God talking to me about that? The first thing I ask the question, who is the angel? Is the angel someone that has wings and he's going to flap down in the darkness and he's going to go look for Satan and he's got a chain and a key and going to lock him up? You see what I'm saying? Who can challenge the position of Satan under the veil? The word of God. The angel is someone God has called to give the chain to, to give the key to in the spiritual realm, to go under the veil and to speak with that thing to deal with it in people's lives. Satan's seat is in the core of our soul. Is that right? Yes. So where is this angel gone in the core of our soul? I'm talking some stuff here at another level now. This angel is a ministry. This angel is a messenger. Is that right? Yes. Angels are messengers. We're not talking about angels with wings. We're talking about people in the earth. It's a ministry that God has sent into the earth, but in the spirit... He's going to deal with Satan. He's given a language to deal with Satan. Because he says, the key and a great chain in his hand. Hand speaks of power and strength in the realm of the spirit. So whatever's in there, and he speaks it, the power that, that'll go in that chain, he will bind Satan. He will speak to Satan in that realm. We're talking at another level now. If you get the CD on that, go and study it. The angel come down and he speaks him. That binds him and he locks him up. That's a word that comes through him. He locks up and he binds his character. So his character doesn't speak anymore. So when he's put into the bottom of his pit, he's put back in himself. His character now has been bound. You hear what I'm saying? That's all part of the Day of Atonement. That's all part of the power of God that's coming into the church. Of course, this goes on to say in verse 3, it says this, and shut him up and bound him and put a seal upon him. That's, that's the word of God spoken on him. A seal is the word of God. Satan cannot break the seal over himself when God speaks to him. That he should not, this is it here, deceive the nations no more. How is he deceiving the nations? By external things? by external prophecies, but where is it coming from? In the core of our soul. That's where he sits. Even where Satan's seat is, that's where his seat is. That's, seat means power and authority. He sits in the core of our soul. So this messenger in the church, spiritually, he's walking under the veil in the realm of the spirit. That's what I got last night, early hours of this morning. <clears throat> and I know who that ministry is in the earth. I know who it is. That's why I rang Pastor Brian. Big yuck eye. Then, whoosh, wife wasn't happy. What you doing up? All right. All right. Let's go to Ephesians 5. And also said that in this move, in this power that's coming into the church, and, he, and he's dealing with, not just with Satan, he's dealing with all his principalities, his powers in the high places. Is that right? I'm, I'm, I'm putting two messengers in one here. But the high places is in us. High places in scripture means heavenly places. Our battle's up here. Look at this. Now, I'm not a deadly drawer. But this might look a bit funny like a Martian head or something or, or a mushroom. I'm trying to paint a picture 
<laughs> I'm shocking, eh? I'm trying to paint a picture. Up here is our spirit. Our spirit is up in this realm here. That's the third heaven. Second heaven is our soul. First heaven is our flesh, our body. So we have spirit, soul, body. Is that right? Spirit, soul, body. So in this realm, up in here, we have the throne of God. We have the voice of the Father. We have the throne of God. That's all internal, is that right? Internal. Internal, external. Internal, spirit, throne of God. Internal, soul, second heaven. External, flesh, everything around us. Amen? That's a good thing. So here, Ephesians 5 says this, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. So when he's speaking about head of the church, the head of the church, he's speaking he's the head of the character. A little watch this so I don't go till midnight. And he is the saviour of the body, the church, the bride, the character. He is the saviour. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, or the head, so the wives to their husbands in everything. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, that he gave himself for it, that he might sanctify, cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. See, we're coming into a powerful move here. This washing of the water of the word. Passover, we had some, had some stuff happen there. Pentecost, we're having some stuff there. Now, I, I didn't do a good job. The power of his word. is going to move through this dimension here. And this is all under the veil. All this area here, this is darkness. This is, where the, this is the abode of demons and devils. This is where the table of devils are. All in this area under the veil. And this affects the flesh. Our healing comes from up in this realm here. But this is where our spirit needs to speak. And it will download into this area here. When Jesus came to a people in darkness, he sat under the shadow of death. Well, he didn't, he, he was walking in the natural, body and flesh here, he was walking in the natural, but spiritually he came from, he came under the veil. He was the light that penetrated the veil. He is the light of the world. Is that right? This world, this church here under the veil. That's where the light went. Even though he's walking in the natural and doing these things here, spiritually, his spirit was open to walk with under the veil. That's why Legion said, you come to torment us before time. It wasn't a natural torment or doing anything there. Legion was talking to Jesus in the spirit. You can hear it. When someone gets, the devil gets cast out of someone, you can hear the demon singing out. No doubt they all heard Legion talking to Jesus in the natural, but spiritually it was a face-to-face -face encounter. Don't cast us back into the pit. Send us into the swine. And that's another thing I'm, I'm going to talk about one day. These, the very, look, it can be a touchy subject. 
to us Indigenous people about cultural stuff, but be very, very careful. Very, very careful. Because those, those demons went into the pigs. Those demons can enter pigs and control them. What else can they go into and enter and control? The Lord was showing me some stuff about that. Because my encounter up in PNG, when that thing had the control of the language of the dogs, and I thought, whoa, that's, that's interesting, Lord. Thank you for showing me that. He took the language of the dogs and began to bark it out. We, we're coming up in another level. God is showing me some stuff in another level here. But I'll get back to that later. <clears throat> so here, this dimension here says this, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that he should be holy and without blemish. Okay. I've got 101 things here. Amen. Am I still on air? Okay. So here, when he's talking about the woman, notice, and I said before about these false prophets and false Christs and all those there, they're, they're talking about external stuff here. Everything that's going to happen external. But the move of God, as we know now, is in this realm here, in the core of our soul. This is the woman, or this is the bride that he's coming back for. Is that right? We've heard that many a time. So you've been impregnated and matured enough to say, I am the bride. I've been impregnated with the seed of Christ. It's in me. I'm matured because that seed is opened up in me. I'm a man of the spirit. I am not a man of the soul. I am a woman of the spirit. I am not a woman of the soul. Lord, pray this prayer when, you, when you've got time. Lord, deal with everything under the veil in me. Show me everything under darkness that's inside me so you can deal with it, so I can repent of it. Because when he comes to the notice in Revelations, he said, the, the, the angel said, and the Lord says this, I have one thing against you. Where, where's that? Is it an external thing? Have I got a, my car too flash? I, 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 oh no, I don't like it with that car. Oh Lord, I repent of that car. See, external stuff. I have one thing against you. He's talking about under the veil. There's a lot of idols under that veil. A lot of things that we worship under that veil. We made altars under there that God wants to pull down. These altars in the high places that sits under the veil of darkness here that God wants to destroy. They were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. Oh, it's an external stuff. You can see them going to the pubs now. They're doing this, they're taking drugs. No, they're eating and drinking and giving in marriage and making covenants under the veil here. That's where they're eating and drinking, under the veil and giving in marriage and making covenants there. The covenant of darkness that needs to be broken is in here, in this realm here. Not an external thing. Oh, I gave up drinking alcohol and I'm full on for the Lord now. Oh, wow. Was an external thing that happened? Oh, no. God dealt with it from under the veil. In me. Because there's a spirit there that's under the veil. The spirit of alcohol, if I can say it like that, he, that that's his job. That's his position to deal with the drunks. To give them more alcohol. To see them go to hell. The drug addict, the prostitute, everything else, all those in that area there, they have spirits. There's a hierarchy sitting in here. This is the kingdom of darkness, and he has his own hierarchy in there. The word of God is going to dismantle the hierarchy from under the veil. She has to be dressed and clean and pure and white and holy. Is that right? Yes. Well, the man of sin... Look at this. The man of sin, he has to be what? Reveal. Reveal means to take off the cover. The removal of the veil. Oh, hallelujah. Do you see that? The removal of the veil of the man of the sin. Then he's revealed. He sits in the darkness in the core of our soul under the veil. And he's speaking and doing things that he should not be there. He sits in the temple of God. Not in a temple over there in the Middle East somewhere. 
not an external temple. He sits in this temple under the veil. Oh, you see that? Get that into your spirit. So here, so God gave himself. So we know now, and they'll tell you as well. But see, see the, the two things that we do agree on, even those that are prophesying external of the coming of the Lord and all this stuff here, we do agree on one thing, that Jesus Christ is coming back. He is coming back. But their carnal interpretation of the, of the word is external. The spirit of this word will tell your spirit that it's internal. That's, that's the difference. Because they, did, they talk on the rapture, and I said it before, the rapture is a, not an external, uh, it's an external experience and in their interpretation of every, how everything's gonna happen. No, the, the interpretation that God has given us is caught up here in this realm, internal. Our feet is not gonna leave the earth. We're gonna change like this in the twinkling of an eye. We're all not going to float up. See what I'm saying? My shoe not going to fall down and hit someone on the head that's been left behind. <laughs> what, what the? See what I'm saying? Trousers fall over there, shirt over there. But they, they're doing that. That's what they're saying. Cars will fall off the road and planes will fall from the sky and all that there. This is so dangerous. I'm saying this because the church, there are those that are believing that. They're following that. So they look, look with their understanding and in their nakedness, they're looking and they're going to miss it. When the true spirit of the word comes, they're going to miss it. Why? Why? Because they're naked. They're not walking in their understanding. It's because he's come to them as a thief in the night. Revelations 16 says that. Verse 15, he says, Blessed, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches. Not an external watching. Not by observation. I'm not watching over there. There he comes on the cloud. I can see him on the horizon. Let's get ready, you fellas. Here he comes. Our watching is through the spirit of this word, internal. And he says here, and keeps his garments by walking in the understanding of the internal coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, not an external coming. Less he walked naked, that's them now, that he walked naked and they see their shame. They're naked because they're not in the understanding of the spirit of this word that is coming internal. Did I say that right? But here, there's so much to say in a little time. But you know the good thing I say it about this church? Good thing about this church here? You've got men and women here on fire for God. I said that before. I see that in here. I see ministers of fire in this church. Pastor Selena. There's young men and women in this church and more to come that are going to be on fire with this word. You see, when God puts a seed in you, it don't just sit idle. There's a reason why he put this seed in you. He wants to nurture it, mature it, and open it up in you. Then out of your spirit is going to come a language that you've never seen before or heard. There's a boldness coming into this church. There's a boldness... There's a boldness in this young man that I see in his spirit. There's a boldness in you. There's a boldness in that young man. There's a boldness in this young man. There's a boldness in that young woman. I'm not just talking about young, young people as well. I'm talking about age has got nothing to do with it here. The fire is going to touch all of us. Ministry, see, my grandson is this big my grandson and he's been tormented by a spirit Pastor Manny the spirit will come in the room and try and grab him on the foot and pull him out of the door 
And he said to me, Popeye, that, that man there in the tree at the back, he, keep, he wants me to go through that door there. So, okay. I prayed with him. I let the Holy Spirit go with him. You see, for me, my grandson's going to be a minister in this season. And he said this. I said, what happened? I knew that thing would come back. The next night, that thing come back. Started grabbing him, pulling him off the bed. Then he stood up. Grandson stood up. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out. A, a little boy saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out. And his mother said, what, what did it do? He said, he had to go, mum. He couldn't stay. I'm talking about ministry in the earth, these little people. If we want to talk age, 90-year-olds. 80-year-olds, 50, 70, right down to these young ones. The spirit of them is the same spirit that I got. It's the same spirit up here. We're all the same spirit. When the remnant go in, there's not only going to be the 50-year-olds go in, we all us other fellas got to stay outside. No, we all go in. Age has got nothing to do with it. We're all going in. The anointing can touch the one in the womb as well. Is that right? Because when Mary is it, came to Martha, is that right? Yeah. And John the Baptist, oh, hallelujah, he leaped inside. There was movement inside. Before he even came out in the natural, the anointing touched him on the inside. So when this fire comes, it's not going to just touch those in the seat. If I say this nightly, uh, nicely, any pregnant women in the church, you, inside your belly, your child is going to be touched by the anointing. It's not going to just touch it. It's going to touch everywhere in us. And they will feel it on the outside. They said, they said about Smith Wigglesworth, people fell around him and all this stuff. You know, praise God for Smith Wigglesworth, the anointing that was on his life. I'm talking about the anointing of this fire that's going to ignite and touch people when you walk around. Not only your shadow that's going to be on fire, your entire character will be on fire. But we're talking at another, another level of ministry of things that are going to happen in the earth. Why? Because of the spiritual movement that's happened under the core of our soul here, under the veil. Big movement here that's going to happen. You talk about revival, I'm talking about character change. Spirit, soul, and body. Oh, we blowed those fellows. So here, <coughs> a glorious church, a holy bride, so under the veil, by taking off the veil and dealing with all the altars and all the stuff that I've just been talking about under here, he wants to make her holy and pure. Pure. Holy and pure. That tells me we can't get married unless we're dealt with. We can't be impregnated from the seed that comes out of the throne of God, that the seed that comes out of the holies of holies, we cannot be impregnated with a holy seed. A holy seed would not mix itself with a contaminated woman. Yet he deals with her first. She's sleeping on a bed here and prostituting herself under the veil. You've got to speak it out. Because when you see something in the spirit, if, you, if I misinterpret it, and if I not connected with the Holy Spirit and the, mis the interpretation is, is, is twisted, and I, or, or if I'm not saying as I heard him tell it to me, I'll be lying to you. It's got to be said what the scripture says. If I get something for my brother and I've got to tell him it, brother, you need to stop da -da 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 what you're doing. If I try and twist it and soften it up and all that, that it's not the way God said it. He's got to know that I, I heard from God, and when I say it from God, he's going to know, whoo, that's from God. You know, it's not to put him down, belittle him. We all, we all went through the process. We all made a good kick up the thigh muscle. Don't we? You see... When you get in, into your ministry with the Holy Spirit, it's a lonely ministry. It's just you and him. 
for me, I don't have friends come around and go fishing. I'm fishing this other way. I get joy in that fishing, the spoken word of God. Don't worry about having friends. You know, it, that's, that's just me. I don't worry about having friends. My sole purpose for me, because I've heard and saw so much from God, is my focus, my head is in there. Like that. That's where I want to be. Every single minute I come home from work, I, I'm buggered from work, I still, my spirit is alive. But the flesh, he walking like that. But my spirit is alive. That's what keeps me going. You've you got to press. We've got to run the race. No matter what's happening around us, we've still got to run the race. Don't let those false ministries and all that deter you from your inheritance. Because all those that are focused that way now, looking for the external manifestation and things that are happening in the earth, they're going to miss their inheritance. We've got to look back in ourselves. So we know that, that the cross was on the outskirts of the city. I'll put the cross up here. Because I said, as I said before, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. Hey, talking about this realm here. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That was his cousin down here. But up in the realm of the Spirit, he's the Lamb of God. He got the revelation and understanding through the Holy Spirit. And we know now John the Baptist was the high priest at the time and Jesus came to him in the wilderness and there was an exchange there. An exchange happened when the Holy Spirit came down and, and when the heaven was opened up and Jesus come up and the anointing of the Holy Ghost came down on him. You see the anointing, I, I can't get away from it, Pastor. The anointing was also, it's, it's the character that's anointed. When she, when she, that woman with the sick and that, and she reached out and she touched him on the hem. She touched him on the hem. Didn't touch his foot or his ankle. Didn't grab his hand. Didn't put his, her hand on his head. She touched the anointing that was still in the garment. The tassel, the Holy Spirit, that's the anointing. It's his move. He's the anointing that's coming into the church. And those he's going to anoint, he's going to come down on, if I can say it like that. Jesus came up, he came down on bodily form. This ministry coming into the church, that they're going to come in the bodily form of the Holy Spirit. Can I say it like this? They'd be the white horse, uh, uh, riders on the white horse in the church. Are you hearing this? We're coming up into another level of ministry in the church. This meat is on fire. Oh, I can sit here all day. Okay. So here, Luke, and I said observation, I might as well read it. I want to go further. I might as well read it for those out there. Luke 17, verse 20 says this. And when, the, when they demanded of him, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all them, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered and said, The kingdom of God cometh not by observation. Is that right? We've heard that said. But just for those out there, because sometimes I talk ahead and I'll come back to scripture, what I'm doing now. So, does not come by observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. These are false prophets and false Christ. They will teach you, like I just said, the Christ and the manifestation of his coming is external. And that what they're saying here now, they're saying low here or low there. So people are looking, they'll name a place, Jordan. He's going to come to the Jordan and we're all gathered there. So that all the people will look towards Jordan overseas for the manifestation of Jesus Christ or in the temple over there. He'll be in this temple. All right. So the churches through the world today will look to that temple for the manifestation of Jesus Christ. Plain and simple, we are the temple. It's not an external thing. I'll go on further. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you or in your midst. 
He said it plain and simple, but yet today you'll still hear the prophecies of them saying that Jesus Christ is coming in a cloud over there, doing this or doing that and doing that, coming on a white horse with big wings and that, and he'll land over there in Israel. That's not going to happen. You've got to hear me out there, hear the spirit of this word. He's coming, God said it here, he's coming within you. In you means, the interpretation means, in your midst. He's coming in your midst. It's not coming external, outside of you in the flesh. Outside of that, he's coming internal, in your midst. And they, look at this. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see the days of the Son of Man and you shall not see it. You shall see, they desire, they're all looking that way by observation, to see it, and yet they will not see it. You've got to look at what he's saying here. Because they're all looking external now. If we're looking internal, we're going to see it. We're going to see him. And all those who pierced him. Oh, where are they? Still in the graves over there somewhere? No, we're talking about the spirit world. He's gone right back. They'll all see him in the spirit world. And they shall say here, look, see here or see there. And God says this, go not after them or follow them. So see here and see there is an external thing where they want you to look and see where God will come. Can I say this? Internal, see here, look there. Or low here, low there. Look and look back in here. Because the feast, like I just said before, it's all internal. So too is the, cl uh, the cleansing, and so too is the marriage. So observation, it's a natural external thing. It does not come in such a manner that it can be watched with the eyes. Not with an outward show. That's what the observation means. There's a lot more to it. But... It's plain and simple. It's not out there. I can't put it any more simpler. So the disciples, look at this, the disciples, because they weren't, now they know they're not looking external for his coming. They got the revelation. We'll see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and they will be clothed in the understanding. Those who are not clothed in the understanding are naked and will not see it by looking by the observation external. So, I've got that mixed up a bit there, but as we know now, external doesn't get it, internal gets it. Yeah. All right? So our teachings in the church, I'm not changing the teaching here, nothing like that. Our teachings in the church has got to be internal. The internal working of the Holy Spirit is working inside us. Amen? So low here, low there. You know what low means? This word low. It means calling attention to what may be seen and heard external. There you go. So they're telling everyone to look that way. So repenting. See, repent means to turn away from and to look back into ourselves. Don't look that way. But there are those, can I say this well, this is what I saw. Many in the churches will get this revelation. They will get the revelation and understanding that Jesus Christ is going to manifest through a character and not externally out there. Well, all right, common sense will tell you. How are we all going to fly overseas and line up? Oh, big line. All the way past the Jordan, over the hills and everywhere. Get up to the church and get married to Jesus. That's, that's how they talk. We, we've got to lift all this up in the spirit. Our marriage is in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. We'll be all changed in the twinkling of an eye. We'll all be holy in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, the dead in Christ and those who remain shall be caught up. I didn't say rapture. Shall be caught up internal. That word is going to get donged on the head. 
God is going to delete that word. Though it says in Scripture, those who add to or take away, very, very bad thing to do. Amen. All right. I'm just starting page four, and I'll finish, finish there. Matthew 24, verses 3, 4, and 5. And as he sat upon the man of all, the disciples came under him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, and what is the sign of your coming and the end of the age? All right? So the sign of his coming, now they're prophesying all external stuff by observation. That's their interpretation, the carnal interpretation of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're looking for earthquakes. They're looking for Russia to come down. They're looking for the Battle of Armageddon. They're looking for tidal waves. They're looking for fire. They're looking for hail out of the air. They're looking for storms and hurricanes and big winds. They're looking for all these things. See, these are the signs that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. They're looking for that stuff. Instead of lifting it up in the spirit, lightning comes out of the throne. Earthquake comes out of the throne. What, what do you mean earthquake? That's a word. It's a word to shake the foundation of something and to break it up. Lightning is a word. The coming of the Son of Man, it says that the lightning will come from the east as far as through the west. So what are they going to do? All stand over there and look where the sun is going to come up and watch it all go over that way? Oh, that's the Lord coming. No. East to the west is in the core of our soul. That's where it is there. There's a north, south, east and west there, up in the spirit. There's a lot more to say about that area. Just chucking the, some stuff out there. So it says here, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The only man that will deceive you or anyone, these false prophets and false Christ, they will deceive you from under the veil. When they start speaking this external stuff and all this here, they're deceiving you from the word of God. See, Satan's not, he's not worried about the world and all the alcohol and drugs and everything going on out there. He's, his main arch rival is the word of God. And when it starts coming through a people, and it starts exposing him, starts talking about from under the veil, he's starting to get fidgety in his seat there. He's starting to get a bit worried. Well, this fellow starts to talk about my seat here. He's starting to talk about me. These people are starting to look back within themselves, and they're going to see me here soon. They're starting to get an understanding where I really am. See what I'm saying? I thought I had them all filled by looking out there. No. A remnant will be turned in this, in this word of God and to look back in themselves. That's why God says this spiritual repentance is going to come into the church. Because there's things that's going to be revealed under the veil in the core of our soul that will say, Lord, repent, I repent. Deal with that thing in my life. Amen? We're, we're stepping into it. We're stepping into it. It says here, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and deceive many. Well, they're not coming to deceive the world outside. They're coming to deceive those in the church. Satan will, descend, will send his messengers in the church to deceive them with his own interpretation of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is external. That's a message from under the veil. That's a message of darkness. The interpretation of the spirit of this word cannot be interpreted from under the veil. Satan cannot interpret the spirit of this word. Or else they would have killed Jesus back then, when he was born. They would have killed him back then. They would have known where he was coming, and they would have dealt with him. But because his word is carnal so too his teachings in the church today will be the incarnal interpretation of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll all be looking that way when he's come this way in secret into a people. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right, I've got up the four pages. So I did say something about the Battle of Armageddon. Can I just read that? before I close off. 
Notice that in Revelation 13, Revelation 16, verse 13 says this, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, beast, and the false prophet. For they are spirits of devils or demons working miracles which go forth in the kings of the earth and the whole world, which means the church. See, these kings of the earth, where are they? Where, where are they now? They are the highest point of ministry in the church. They're the kings of the earth right now. They have mass masses of people that come to them. So if they're prophesying to this mass congregation of the, the, the carnal interpretation of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, surely all those people believe what those kings of the earth are telling them. You see, spirit-like frogs that come out of the mouth of Satan, out of the mouth of the beast, that's from under the veil. So their doctrine these kings of the earth, these ministries in the earth today, their doctrines are doctrines of devils. That's what their doctrines are. Verse 16, it says, And he gathered them together in a place called, he in Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Now, Satan, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, and the kings of earth are not all going to be gathered over there in Megiddo, and there's going to be a big war there. It's, we've got to look internal. And, and I'll, I'm, I'm, I may be teaching on the Battle of Armageddon in the street of the great city in the conference. That's what I'm praying about at the moment. The street of the great city here, right here. This street is where the Battle of Armageddon will happen. Because in the battle, he has to take out the devil. He has to take out the false prophet. He has to take out the beast. He has to take out his kingdom under the veil. That's where the battle is. We're not going to get free by an external World War III. See what I'm saying? If they were to drop all them bombs and everything going over there, there's going to be no one left on earth. The bomb of the Holy Spirit is going in here. That's where he's going. Right in the core of our soul. That's where the battle is, right between our ears. Lift it up in the spirit and you'll see it in there. That's where the battle is. Amen. I'm just going to pray. Eh? I hope you got something there. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Father, we thank you for the anointing and your, the purpose of the anointing when it comes, what it wants to do, what it wants to say, how your anointing operates. I don't know that young girl's name, your daughter, but I see, I've been praying for her. I see darkness pulling at her. I see a hook in her. I see a hook in her. And uh, I'm just going to pray over her life right now. Father, for that young girl right now, that hook that's in her from darkness, Father God, she's been hooked by a spirit. So, Father God, we just don't want the line removed. We want the hook, line, and sinker, and everything that's hooked her life right now. Father, according to your word, your sword, we speak it into darkness right now under the veil of this demonic spirit that's, that's got her bound there, Lord. Her, her, her hungerness, her greed, and everything about that's going on in her soul right now, Lord. There's, there's a hook there, Father God. I see that hook, Lord. You show me this hook there in her life there right now. Father, by you, Holy Spirit, we're praying it, and that's how you do it, Holy Spirit. It's how you operate. I can't pull it out, but you can, Lord. We're speaking your word right into her situation of her life right now. Her children, everything about her, Lord. Let it be transformed. Let it be broken in the spirit right now. Let it be removed out of her life right now. Let the anointing touch that hook right now in her life. Father, let there be a change in her life right now. Yeah, you scream. 
every spirit, every spirit that's behind your case and everyone here right now, every spirit that's behind your situation right now, you, you, you need to pray. I want to hear you, church. I can't hear you. Every spirit behind my situation. Every spirit behind my situation. I can't hear you. Be removed. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit that's connected to my soul. Be removed. Be removed. Be removed. Be removed. Be removed. The Holy Spirit. I can't hear you. Holy Spirit. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Mercy. Touch me. Fire of God. I can't hear you. Fire of God. Touch my sick bed. Touch my sick bed. Oh, Jesus. 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 Remove these shackles. Father, in your name, every bondage of darkness be broken in my life, internal, under the veil of darkness, right now. I see you being charged here. I see you being charged. I see you being stirred in your spirit here. I see you being stirred in your spirit. Church, you're being stirred in your spirit here. You're, you're at the point of warfare here. You're talking to darkness now. You're in the point of warfare. Oh, Holy, Holy Spirit. I can't hear you. Holy Spirit. Cut off the covenant of darkness. Anything that has been passed down through my family, from generations, under the veil of darkness, Lord, I repent. Cut off. Cut off. Cut off. Cut off. Cut off. Cut off. Oh blood, touch me. Oh blood, touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Blood. 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 Blood of the Lamb. Blood of the Lamb, touch me. Ooh. I see, I see some here that have been bind. But now you're about to see. You are now to about to see. I once was blind, but now I see. I'm declaring that in you right now. You're about to see. You're no longer naked. Be clothed. Be clothed. I need you to say this. Clothe me. me. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy Holy Spirit. Clothe me. Clothe me. Clothe me. Thank you, Father. Lord, that we are obedient to you, not man. Man has got nothing to do with this. It's your move. We, we give it over to you, Holy Spirit, this day. Oh, thank you for dealing with the things in us, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Your healing is in you.
your healing there and there. The anointing of the healing is in you. The anoint I declare this in your tongue, and I declare this in your language. The anointing is in your tongue. You've got to speak it. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is in your tongue. I am healed. I am healed. Let the anointing touch your sickness. Let the anointing touch your sickness. You've got to speak it. You've got to speak it. This mountain in front of me. Be removed. The anointing is in your word. The mountain has to move because the anointing is in your word now. The anointing is in you. You've got to speak it and let the anointing do what it has to do. Whatever mountain is in your way, you've got to speak through it because the anointing now is in your language. The anointing is on your spirit. You've got to speak to it. Any demonic spirit that's hindering you, speak the anointed word. Speak the anointed word. Because they obey the anointed word when he walked. The anointing word now is in you. Father, thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the anointed church here, Lord. Father, thank you for coming down on the anointed church here, Lord. The battles are nothing to the anointed word that's in you. Any battle in the natural that's taken place, let the anointed word in you speak over it. Anything in the natural that you're battling with, let the anointed word speak over it. Anything external that's hindering you, let the anointing word speak over it. The power is in the anointed word. The power is in the anointed word. The power is in the blood. The power is in the anointing of the blood. Speak the anointed word. That's the message for the day for your church. Speak the anointed word that's been given to you to speak. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. Amen, amen, amen. Love you all. Everything today was said in love, eh? Bless you. Bless you.